You all thought I was dead, didn't you? They are visibly injured. Graffiti, you're so silly. Obvious that something is fake. People can hurt themselves. It's not as much of a difficult thing as you think it is. And that's when they did the whole suicide live stream too. Which is to why I have a feeling yeah. <laughs> they're gonna live stream again after all of this. Because I mean, Ashton made a video on them. Now I'm making a, a whole stream about this. Anyway, TLDR, Robert is an awful person who abuses his pet and has made no attempts to change, and instead runs and hides when things get too inconvenient. In what situations can you criticize an audience for being part of a persisting problem that you've noticed? It's a question I see addressed in a lot of videos as of late. The Phantom Graffiti situation caught my eye way back in April of this year, but it's evidently taken me a very, very long time to actually get around to covering it. I found it particularly strange because of how harshly the situation was presented and talked about in almost any video I stumbled on. The subject of these videos, Robin, also known as Phantomalopia and Braindead Robin, was at the time 13 to 14 years old. The situation mostly revolved around discussing how Robin would regularly try to commit suicide on live streams, faking his own death, concern revolving around how he was treating his pet rabbit, and how he would continually lash out at everyone around them. To say I can't see why people would treat the situation so harshly would be a lie on my end. This situation is messy and chocked full of missteps from Robin, but I also feel like the current videos covering and discussing the situation shine too much of a spotlight on what Robin did and completely ignore some pretty important elements that would help to explain why Robin acted the way he did. With that said, please keep in mind that despite the fact I feel that what I will be presenting in this video will give you guys a better picture of the situation and how it spiraled, it does not mean I am trying to excuse Robin's actions. I completely acknowledge that he has made several mistakes throughout the drama, but I think it would be simply misleading if I only talked about how Robin acted and contributed to the drama. This video will include brief discussions about BPD. This video is not meant to be a diagnosis on anyone, nor is it attempting to use mental illness as an excuse. I feel that it is important that we are able to recognize when and how mental health may influence actions taken, but at the end of the day, Robin is still responsible for the way he has acted. We all good? All right. Let's get going. Before we can actually talk about how the situation was handled, we first have to get everyone caught up on exactly what happened here. Because I don't think even the people who are familiar with the situation really know everything that went on. And I'm only saying that because I had to watch a lot of different videos to get the whole picture, with many of them leaving out context or simply not knowing the context to situations. And unfortunately, the most popular videos on this topic don't mention what happened before the live streams and treat the live streams as an isolated incident, where Robin was suddenly doing it for attention or to get the hate he was receiving to stop. I am not going to completely discredit these interpretations, as I do think they may have been part of his reasoning, but I don't believe it accounts for all of his behavior. So let's start from the beginning, and the beginning is very, very far back. The year is 2018, and Robin isn't part of the picture just yet. Instead, we have to talk about two other creators, who had both come to play a large part in the Braindead Robin drama. Kitty Swirl Fudge, now known as Soph the Neko or Rune, was a 12-year-old furry animation and art channel on YouTube. She would make and post animations as well as rent videos onto her channel, where another user by the name of Major Klug would stumble across. Klug was a 15 turning 16 year old, who was a bit of a troll and had a distaste for furries. I've reached out to both parties to try and clarify who contacted who first, but unfortunately Klug never responded. Soph claims that Klug had begun trolling through her comment section with a few alt accounts, to which she reacted poorly. Soph would create her own army of alt accounts to spam Klug back, and the two of them had this back and forth for quite a few months. About a month after their first interactions, on December 28 of 2018, Klug would go on to upload a video titled, Is Kitty Fudge Swirl a Sociopath? And the video... Hello Shid, are you a sociopath? Um, no. I mean yes I am. I am. Well there you have it, she is indeed a sociopath. And as always my friends, do it like that funky cat doe. 
It was clearly a troll video to try and get a reaction from Soph, and Soph, being 12, gave Klug the reaction he wanted, and this back and forth would spiral into drama between them. Klug would upload many videos responding to Soph, however many of them have since been deleted or taken down, with the only two that have remained undeleted being one made on May 18th, 2019 titled Hey Rune, which shows a few messages that Soph had sent to Klug where she seemed to be trying to troll him back. Around late 2019, Soph and Klug would manage to talk things out and agree to a ceasefire that would grow into somewhat of a friendship. However, the damage from all the videos Klug had made earlier had been done. Soph was regularly receiving harassment from Klug's fans, and even during Klug and Soph's tentative friendship, Klug apparently made no effort to discourage this said harassment. The ceasefire would last all the way up until early 2021, where Klug would once again make another video on Soph. On February 7th, 2021, Klug would make his last video directly addressing Soph, titled Funny Rant on Rune XX, The Final Fit Check. According to Klug, this video was made because... So eventually, we came to a neutral standpoint. That was until recently, I came to the conclusion that whenever she found a slightly bigger YouTuber who could, I don't know, expose me, she would go off the cut and try to take me down. So the objective of this video is to put that little cretin in her place. Most of the video is just Klug rambling and taunting Soph with pictures they had taken and posted of themselves. I want to make it very clear that Klug did not dox Soph, as distasteful as this is, whether it be a joke or a serious shot. By this point, Klug had developed a very specific way to end his videos, which was usually to kill the subject in question. Hey Brune, what do you call a three-legged dog? XM42 flamethrower? <laughs> I'm a funny one. Oh, oh, oh. One last thing. Yes, this is technically satire, but it is just a little whack that you would spend your time animating your character brutally murdering some other kid's character and posting it for all to see, while you are a fully grown adult. This video would also send a whole new wave of harassment towards Soph, to the point where even though it had been almost half a year since his video had gotten released, Soph was still receiving harassment daily. So just what was it that Soph was going to other YouTubers about that got him so stirred up? According to Soph, around December of 2020, she had a friend message her about allegations of Klug being a groomer, along with evidence that had yet to be confirmed to be true. Soph would go on to try and contact larger creators to investigate further into this possible grooming allegation. And this finally takes us back to what happened with Robin. Hello, hi, editing stream here. I wanted to add a little bit of clarification to the section. Klug was completely in his right to be responding to these kind of serious allegations. Everyone should be treated as innocent before being proven guilty, as there has been no evidence so far of Klug actually having groomed anyone. Soph and Robin had become friends with each other, and Robin, after witnessing his friend regularly getting attacked and harassed by the fan base of a much larger creator, would make a video sometime in the summer of 2021 dissecting how Klug was a terrible content creator, his terrible management of his Discord server, and that he was an overall bully. Please keep in mind that at this point, Robin had not made any claims yet that Klug was a groomer. And to Robin's credit, Klug's Discord server is indeed a mismatched garbage fire of edgy 12 year olds. Eventually, Klug would respond with a video of his own on October 13th, 2021. Rant on Graffiti Alokia. Life ruined. Read description. And this video is the bane of my existence. Okay, I can this, uh, <laughs> Look at it. It's so freaking silly. It seemed like they had the IQ of a carrot. Graffiti, so you're so silly. Look how silly she is. It's outrageous. No, I, I really Graffiti, I want you to fuck okay. my mom. <laughs> I'm not joking, Graffiti. Seriously, I want you to do my mom. I will delete my channel if you do not do my mom in the next three days. Huh? Oh, British. The whole thing isn't even done in poor taste, it's done in awful taste. With the credits calling Robin by the completely wrong pronouns, and also referring to them as overweight. Robin would later state that during this time, his body dysmorphia got a lot worse. This is where I'd like to stop and talk about something I've noticed during this situation. Something that is regularly overlooked in this situation is how Robin's detractors treat Robin, which is always something that's bothered me. People have always been mad at Robin because they couldn't begin to understand why he was acting the way he did, as if the strain his detractors caused him was somehow lesser than the strain he caused other people. 
Klug's video would send droves and droves of his fans to harass Robin, to the point that on December 6, 2021, Robin would attempt suicide because of this non-stop harassment, and the way Klug and his audience reacted to this information is beyond disgusting. I want to make it very, very clear that I do not believe you should be blaming any one person for someone else taking their life, but that doesn't mean that gives other people the privilege to mock and joke about that said suicide like Klug was doing. So I decided to go and watch Graffiti's video on you, and honestly, I can see where they're coming from. A lot of the stuff that went down in your Discord server was frankly very poorly managed, and some really horrible stuff was done. The harassment of Rune several months after your video was also pretty terrible. Don't get me wrong, I still enjoy your content, but I think you should establish some firmer boundaries for your fans about harassment and the like, as they are very young. Hashtag mega cap. Also, you've gotta be really stupid if you think it's suicidal because of me. This is a joke video to which she responded very enthusiastically, and she clearly had rough enough skin not to let stupid comments bother her. This is likely something far worse in their personal life that no one is even involved in. It's extremely disrespectful to assume that people are upset about something really petty, so until we know the reason she's actually upset, it's best not to point fingers. All you're sending is her channel. We already know she's gone. You're assuming it's because of me. However, I know they aren't all that sensitive, and not to mention, she joined my server a month and a half ago. This is completely different and unrelated, and a lot freaking worse than a couple of kids calling it fat. I wouldn't say it was because of you, but before their channel was gone, I saw their video on you, and some really vile stuff apparently happened in the Discord server of yours. That could have been an easily contributing factor. I understand it would be frustrating to be blamed for this, but I saw some of your other replies to comments addressing this, and you don't really seem to care that someone potentially took their own life. All I can say is, I hope they didn't go through with it. Check the description, bozo, I didn't encourage anything. Uh, okay, the fat shaming and misgendering was totally uncalled for. Hashtag awesome! I get that it was ironic, but comments like that can really hurt people, man. It's okay, I'm not fat shaming her. I'm just so happy she is open about being overweight. I support they, them, for whatever they choose to do. As someone who also attempted to commit on a live, I find it really frustrating that you're treating this like a joke. And saying stuff like haha it tried to attempt on a live and I killed them haha really isn't funny. If I'm going to be honest, you're probably going to lose a lot of fans from this. Maybe give up the troll act and try acting like a serious adult? You're about to get killed! Jump scares! Haha! <laughs> Another miner down! I'm going to kill them all! I actually agree as a person who also attempted on a live before. It's fucking disgusting and disrespectful. That's why I'm winning! True, bro, I just win! Wh Hashtag number one winner! The fact that you have literally no life and have nothing to do but make unfunny comments and troll while being aware you nearly caused your child to kill itself is sickening. Get the fuck off the internet with your insensitive ass and take your haha we troll, we got him, ha 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 ha, lol, troll face, fan base with you. I'm winning, you lost. Honestly, now you're just showing you're a troll that finds the wrong things funny and is not afraid to show how damn insensitive they are. I wish the worst for people like you. I hope your victims are alright. Get a life. I w you don't know anything. Leave before I block you. While considering you seem to have built a wall or middle school type humor to deflect any real responsibility with any of this, I would like to ask why you've yet to take at least two seconds to acknowledge the fact that you are not doing anything remotely funny or even entertaining. Anyone who finds this entertaining is either a middle school boy who thinks you're a god, or someone wanting to kiss your ass to get any praise they can get. Eventually you'll wake up and smell the BS sir, because if you continue doing this shit over and over and over again, eventually you'll take it too far. If someone actually ends up going through with ending their life because they couldn't take the harassment that you encouraged for nothing more than whatever mild amusement being a dumbass brings you, you could end up literally being taken to court for having played a role in a child's suicide. I don't think you realize how serious this shit is sir. However, I pity your ignorance and hope honestly if you don't learn and improve. Your child truly does have potential. Dark humor mixed with a simplistic yet nice art style can take you a long ways if done properly. However, you've butchered that by completely doing nothing but being immature and honestly pathetic. I enjoy reading your fans' comments on this. I'll enjoy reading your fans' comments on this as I'm sure they can't possibly stand seeing your name slandered as you are top comedy, thank you. Also, to be clear, I don't believe you were the only thing harming their mental health. However, the harassment you caused did play a role. Whether you grow up to acknowledge that or not is up to you. Also, I don't agree with half the shit graffiti did either. Posting about their mental health 24-7 ain't fucking healthy. Using screenshots that had a very big chance of being fake, whether they fake them or not, they shouldn't have tried implying you were a pedo. I don't agree with their shit, I just don't agree with yours either. Because they were emotionally driven by anger, but you're being a man-child. This is so goddamn stupid. Y'all Klug fans can bitch at me in the comments all you like, but why is the adult man being held to the same standard as the fucking kid? But whatever, keep bitching. I love how all the people really be out here like, Ugh, why did you voice your opinion? Like, God, I think this comment is so dumb. Like, oh my God, you're not changing anything. 
And meanwhile, the only thing in my head is a six-year-old throwing his apple juice on the floor, stomping on it, crying over someone's opinion while giving their own opinion, then thinking they won somehow. Comedy at its finest. You failed. 1. You don't know how to respect other people's pronouns, you transphobic fuck. 2. Not you in the comments fighting for your life about the fact you fat shamed it. 3. Don't go and harass them. Proceeds to watch your fans harass them, send them literal CP and IRL gore. 1. Nothing wrong with me. 2. Nothing wrong with me. 3. Nothing wrong with me. 4. Nothing wrong with me. Graffiti survived the attempt. They're okay. No, they didn't. I killed them and replaced them with a lookalike. Kinda messed up to joke about it, though. Kinda awesome. I'm glad Graffiti survived. They deserve better. They didn't survive. I let them meet their maker. Isn't that right, Chica? Chica walks in. Yes? Excuse me? Jump scares all of you. Sorry, Chica. I had no choice. They were trying to tear us apart. Major Klug in the comment section whilst knowing he almost made a minor commit die. Wrong! They are dead! I murdered them forever! Don't even ask me to bring them back, it's too late. Klug attempts to brush off the fact that he had any responsibility in the fact that his fans were harassing Robin by pointing out that he had said in the description of this video not to do so. But when that description is accompanied by a video of you openly mocking Robin yourself, not just in the video but in the comments as well, your actions will speak louder than your words. And whether you like it or not, you did encourage your fans through your actions to harass and continue to harass Robin. Klug, you suck for this. Especially since you were an adult when you made this video and these comments. Please do better. On December 9th, 2021, Robin would return to Twitter and explain that he had survived his suicide attempt and had been in a mental hospital. Unfortunately, even though Robin had said he would be staying away from social media, it wouldn't be long until he returned. And he returned with quite a serious video. On December 13th, 2021, Robin would upload a video titled Major Klug Rant Slash Awareness Video, which contained grooming allegations against Klug. I'm actually not too clear on how these allegations started, whether Robin had been approached by the victim themselves, or if Robin was shown or stumbled across these allegations. The allegations made were that Klug was flirting with a girl named Haley, who was 13 or 14 and Klug was 17. It's at this point in the timeline where everything gets very he said, she said. It was a massive point that this video Robin made had lacked evidence for the claims he was making. There are screenshots out there of Klug talking to Haley, but there have not been any screenshots that have definitively shown any grooming to be taking place. To this end, Robin really, really messed up. Grooming allegations are very serious and not something to be thrown around, even if Klug is quite the jerk. Klug would post on his community tab a day later on December 14th, 2021, with yet another picture of Soph. On December 24th, 2021, Ponder Sprocket would vague tweet about the Klug grooming allegations. Yeah, I know my video is misinformed, and I accuse someone of things I not only don't have the evidence for, but also didn't bother to look up the laws on, but I'm not going to remove it because I'm going to retroactively gather more evidence after the fact. I have such a headache. Yeah, and now Phantom Graffiti is kind of trying to frame him now. I- I said retroactively get evidence, not retroactively make it up! It just- Oh, good lord. The panicky final tweet I saw from them before leaving last night makes weirdly more sense now. Regardless, Phantom Graffiti has failed to prove that this is even Clue's account. Anyone can change their name on Discord and say anything they please. I don't have to be Steve Buscemi to title myself Steve Buscemi on Discord. Does that mean if I ask for news, Steve Buscemi did it? While I can understand the exasperated tone in these tweets that Ponder expresses, I can't ignore that these tweets had an overall negative impact on the situation. I've said it many times before, people can say whatever they want about you if it's shit you've done in public, and I stand by that sentiment. However, just because you can say something doesn't mean that something is always going to do good or even have your intended effect. Ponder is a very sizable creator, and what she says will always hold a lot of weight in the commentary community. There is an insurmountable amount of pressure that comes with being called out by Ponder, even if she is well within her rights to. That kind of pressure can drive someone very young, like Robin, to grow very desperate to not being ostracized by his idol and his community. Such desperation in this case leading to creating fake screenshots. Hi, sorry. Uh, editor stream again. I have to clarify this point again because I don't want it to be misunderstood or misconstrued. I'm not blaming Ponder here for what happened. This was still a decision on Robin's end. I just wanted to point this part out to better illustrate the frame of mind that Robin might have been in while he was making the decisions that he was to help everyone better understand how exactly things went wrong. Hey Julie, can I ask you something? Sure. Uh, I'm really hoarding right now. I know you're 13. Do you think you can send pics? Hello? I'm with my family. Go into the bathroom, dot dot dot. I thought we were friends! Okay, hold on. Again, I'm not saying this to wave away the fact that Robin did spread false allegations and make fake screenshots in an attempt to frame Klug. He should not have done that. Period. 
However, it's still important to bring all of this up so we can all get a better idea of how this spiraled so quickly. On December 28th, 2021, a second video was released by Robin with said fake screenshots to prove that Klug was a groomer. However, he would quickly face major backlash from the community as many videos began popping up debunking how the screenshots could have been faked. On December 30th, 2021, a longtime critic of Robin, Loopy Lamb, formerly known as Jasmine and currently goes by Sebastian, would make a now deleted Twitter thread on Robin. In it, Seb would claim that Robin had made a video that had mentioned Seb, which hinted that Seb was a pedo. They also speak about another video Robin had made responding to the backlash he had been getting from the Klug situation, and hiding behind his mental health and age as a shield to deflect criticism. Robin would later respond to some of the things said in this thread, but we'll talk about it when it comes up. This would spark an argument between Robin and Soph, who although had worked together to fake the screenshots, Soph felt that they had suppressed their anger towards Robin to help him, with Soph commenting on one of his videos that she was disappointed in Robin, and Robin believing that Soph had simply thrown him under the bus as soon as the going got tough. January 1st, 2021 would be marked by a video Robin posted titled Happy Fucking New Year, in which he would self-harm in the video. Robin would return three hours later to take the video down, explaining he had experienced a bit of a mental breakdown and had no recollection of making or uploading the video. Okay, so, I have no idea what happened, but I blacked out after a few hours, and everything is fucking chaos. I have no memory of what happened and like 40 less subscribers. I'm genuinely confused on what happened. I'm looking at my previous community post, and I think I know what happened. Please tell me if I'm wrong though. So, I seem to have a mental breakdown from a video made on me, and blacked out. I relapsed and started vent posting on my community tabs and Instagram talking about how much I wanted to kill myself. I looked through all my comments, around 300 plus, and did I post a video of me self-harming? What the actual fuck? I am disgusted that I've done this, or I think I've done this, and holy fuck, I'm so fucking sorry. I'm genuinely so disgusted with myself. I need a serious break from YouTube. I had 20 plus DMs worried about me and I cannot apologize enough for that. I'm sorry to the harm I caused you and you're all extremely, extremely valid to yell at me and hate me for this. And honestly, I don't blame you. This isn't the first time I've done awful shit due to a mental breakdown, but I'm trying to make sure it's the last. I hurt people and I'm so sorry for that. It doesn't matter if I blacked out or not, what happened happened and it was because of me. On the other hand, a shocking amount of you wanted me dead. I'm actually not mad at that. Anybody who commented that I should die, honestly, I'm not going to attack or defend myself. I deserve all the hate I got. Robin does take some accountability for his actions in the post, acknowledging that even if he did black out, that did not change the fact that he posted this video to his audience of very young fans, many of which were very upset and traumatized by the video. Something I would like to turn my attention to is the last part of the post, noting that many people had spammed them with comments to just do it and go through with a suicide attempt. These same people would also go on to repost Robin's self-harm video again and again, with many of them making light of the situation. And this? This is fucking garbage! This is atrocious! We can all acknowledge that Robin really really fucked up the major Kluke situation, as well as uploading the Happy New Year's video, but that absolutely does not mean we are giving a pass to people who found it appropriate to re-upload the video Robin had taken down, and further trying to coax Robin into committing suicide as well as making fun of his self-harm. I don't know who the fuck thought this was a good idea, but everyone who participated in this needs to get in the bin! Because we're shipping you all off to your dads who never came home with the fucking milk. Unfortunately during this time, Robin has claimed that he did not have access to therapy as his father was barring him from getting it. Without a professional's help to deal with and address the problems that were making Robin act out in destructive ways, not only to his fan base but also to himself, would prove detrimental. On January 2nd, 2021, a live stream would be hosted on a channel by the name of The Welcoming Crew, where the host would ask Robin a series of questions about the recent situation surrounding him. Unfortunately, the live stream has since been taken down, but I will be picking out parts that I found most relevant to the situation for this video. Now, these screenshots, they were like extremely suspicious, they didn't have much context to them, but at the time, this is a this is a very little known fact. Ponda Sprocket commented on my original Major Klug video, like the original video. Don't make them for life. And she said that, oi, this wasn't grooming and you're being an idiot. You kinda you kinda stupid there, mate. So I was like, oh shit. <laughs> I can I need solid evidence. So this person, they DM'd me, alright, they DM'd me, and I stupidly believed whatever evidence they had, even if it was flawed, even if it was stupid, because I was having a breakdown. I was like, oh no, Ponda Sprocket is going to make an exposed video on me since she was, you know, vague tweeting about me, and I just couldn't handle that. <laughs> so, I sort of, like, I just kind of was like, oh shit, I need evidence. So this random person approached me with some, with badly faked, poorly made evidence. So I went into Ebus Paint, right? I took, like, the smudge and the blur feature, because I haven't used it in years, let everything out or tried to and everybody thought I faked the screenshots because the names are so similar. 
I do want to make a note here that when Robin conducted this interview, he claimed in Soph's DMs that he did not have a proper recollection of the screenshot incident, as in supposedly did not remember making the screenshots, and was retelling it as such in the live stream. I hate the way media treated you. I don't even know if I faked the screenshots or if I gaslighted myself into believing I didn't or actually didn't fake the screenshots and I'm just going insane. Man, I can't tell anymore. Oh god, that sounds fucking terrifying. Dude, I don't know what to say. No 13 year old should have to go through that. I don't remember faking the screenshots and I don't remember blurring them, so I don't know if I actually got sent them or anything. Robin is going insane. Do you want to tell me what happened? Because I remember it. What happened? I can't tell anymore and I'm scared. Okay, so basically it started where Haley was telling me not to tell anyone about what happened with Klug, right? I was insisting that we shouldn't use Haley's story, and I sort of fucked up prioritizing my friendship with her. You didn't know what else to do, so you made some fake screenshots to fill in the blank that Klug's victims didn't give you permission to fill. You told me you faked them because you wanted to prove to the public that he's dangerous. Later on, Jasmine messaged me and kind of guilted me into feeling like shit because I was defending you, lol. And Zay had caught onto the screenshot stuff. I then made a big bad boy epic fail mistake of editing a comment to say you faked the screenshots which was totally stupid. Ugh. P.S. If you do know a grooming victim, you are never the bad person for putting their feelings in front of the actual law. It's their trauma, they get to decide how to deal with it. I'm not trying to claim that Haley is a victim of Klug, I'm just putting this out there. Haley just messaged me something kind of irrational, but it made me really sad because I think I lost her. Oh shit, even if they are fake, Klug is still a groomer. I'll just have to prove to the public he's dangerous. If who's fake? What even happened with Ponder? I mean, if I fake screenshots with like, uh, uh, it's a bad idea, but I mean, yeah, I guess. If we can find out what Haley and Klug were saying to each other, I'm going through with it. Cause Klug is a fucking groomer anyway. Yeah, true. All right, I'll just have to fake a few. That'll get most people on our side. Wait, wait, wait. I actually faked the screenshots? Fuck. Holy fuck, I'm a terrible person. You're not. Ah, now I feel like shit for defending myself so much. I wouldn't use my main to fake screenshots, sure thing, buddy. Mm -hmm. uh, is what happened. And that led me to, like, uh, I have borderline personality disorder, so that led to, like, a huge, like, mental breakdown where I hyperventilated and panicked and was, and, like, actually, like, sobbing and sobbing and sobbing. And I physically, like, couldn't... This, this went on for hours, by the way. I was, like, sobbing and crying for hours. <laughs> Yeah, that's Genuine. terrible. No, and, like, it's terrible. A 13 year old and just turning 13, like, literally, should not be going through that. Like and I'm so through. sorry. And people with immediately thought, oh my god, graffiti's trying to show off this self harm scars. And I just. Yeah. Do you. What do you want me to do? Do you want them to poof out of existence? That's not how it works. Mm hmm. Uh. So, as we're moving on to our next topic, um. What is your current, like, opinion on the people who are doing this to you and, like, exposing you, sort of, and, like, you know? Oh, uh, I guess it depends on the individual person. I can understand why people are, like, upset about, like, the self-harming video and the re-uploads and stuff. I can completely understand why people don't want to support me, why people don't like me. I completely understand that, even if it was during a breakdown, blackout, whatever. I understand why people hate me over that. The problem is... The people who have been re-uploading that video. Yes, there have been a solid seven, six upload re-uploads of that. Me, like, let me just say, like, if somebody, like, took the audio and, like, made it into, like, sped it up and played it of the chipmunks, I don't know. And, uh, yeah. It was, it was disgusting. Yeah, <laughs> like I... that, I, I, full responsibility, like, over posting the, like, hold on. Um, and they, it was, like... Dude, what, like, I, 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 I recognize I did something wrong. I recognize I triggered a bunch of people. I am an A-OK, -okay. and people were saying, like, oh my god, you're now mad that people are angry and upset at you? And I've said, no! No, I've never been upset over that. I have never been upset over people being angry at me for that. Sure, you know, maybe I would have been angry over people, like, saying that it was, that I was intentionally looking for attention. Sure, I, I'm angry at that, but I'm not going to retaliate because kind of, in the end, I kind of deserve it. I think it's disgusting. Do you believe that most of the people who are, you know, commenting all that stuff and, like, reposting it, do you believe they are from Major Clue? Oh, absolutely. Like, they talk the same way, they act the same way, they have the same humor. Like, no mentally sane, like, normal person who hates me, because there are a lot of people who hate me. I guess understandably, but it's disgusting that, like, people would do this. Like, I get people telling me to hang and kill myself and, like, do it, do it, do it, do the Ruru Chan, which is, like, that's, like, a girl who killed herself on livestream. And, like, 
I just don't know what to do yeah, anymore. That's awful. So okay. they said, okay, let me write this out. Feel free to reword it if it comes off aggressive. I, as, as I will admit, I am still upset about the situation. First one, why do you keep use, using my age in a way that paints me as a creepy and nasty person, especially when they are trying to make claims against me? Uh, first of all, that is not what I've done. I'm trying to say that, for one, this you are getting into drama with a 13-year-old. A 13-year-old and a 19-year-old have a very, very severe, like, age maturity difference. I'm not trying to paint you out as a creepy, bad, or terrible person for that. I'm painting it out as a, holy shit, this is ridiculous, a 13, it's like if I f went on the street and went into a fist fight with a four-year-old. It, it, ex it wouldn't exactly, you know, mm -hmm. work out well. <laughs> Yeah. Like, it's, I'm not doing it in a terrible light. I'm not using my age as an excuse. I'm saying you are an adult. Act like an adult. You are an adult. Do not get involved with what is essentially kids' drama. Yeah. And um, <laughs> considering that's what this is at this point. Like, not like the, like most of it. It's like severe kids' drama. But is, it, is, it is, at the end of the day, a drama full of kids. And the reason I am telling you to stay out of this is because kids are impulsive. And they attack. And they do stupid shit. Kids are fucking stupid. And if you, if you are an adult and you get into an argument with a kid, you are going to get insulted. Which is exactly what happened. And now you're playing the victim. Jasmine, I'm going to put this very simply. You are not the victim. If you're watching this, you are not the victim of this situation. I'm sorry, you. Di I did not make half my video about you like you say. I mentioned you- I didn't even mention you! I put like- I shaded you slightly. I sh- I flashed up your channel for like half a second to say adults are getting involved in this drama. It was a light shade slash joke and you do not have to take it seriously. Not everything is about that, Jasmine. Where- where are they? Where did they go? Okay. <laughs> Why did they suddenly uh, throw me under the bus when Ponder contacted them and blew up on me when I told them perhaps to stop attacking people for trying to help them, I think. That is absolutely not what happened. I had attacked nobody in that time. You want the screenshots? I will tell- I will show you the screenshots. I had told Jasmine and- because, like, hold on. Jasmine, I was clearly having a mental breakdown and, like, hyperventilating, and Jasmine was giving me a lecture on how to be more mature and responsible, and I had told them, hey, please don't do that, I am having a severe mental breakdown. Do not do that, it will not help me, and it will only make things worse. And they took that as, oh my god, graffiti doesn't want criticism, and... Like, I've made a community post talking about why I have so much trouble accepting criticism and why, if I don't ask for it, please don't give it to me unless it's severely important. Mm -hmm. Which is like, like, I did not throw you under the bus. I t you threw me under the bus, Jasmine. You were the one who told me to fuck off, I believe it was. Where's the fucking chat? Hold on. And uh, after you're finished, can you tell me, like, your opinions on the people advice. who are saying you're using your bipolar disorder and stuff as like a shield oh i don't have bipolar i have like bpd oh, but BPD. i'm not okay. i'm not using it as like a shield i'm using it as a hey it makes hey if this will be actually useless if due to my mental problems i cannot physically take this i physically cannot accept criticism due to this i actually cannot take it in because of my bpd a lot of the time without a warning and if it's harsh it will most definitely not work it will never, ever work like that. I, do, I want to accept criticism. I want to be better. The problem is, my mental disorders prohibit that. They prohibit me actually talking like a normal person. They prohibit me functioning like a normal person. It's not me using my mental disorders as an, ex as an excuse. It's an explanation. At the end of the day, I am still responsible for my own actions. But the thing is, your criticism will not help me he right now. Especially if you say it in an aggressive way, I would just interpret it as hate. I've talked about this before, and it's just, yeah. That's the Jasmine stuff. Jasmine, I'm gonna, like, put this here. Do not harass Jasmine. Do not, like, they are not to blame, okay? They are absolutely not to blame for this. Do not blame them for my self-harm. Do not blame them for that. You cannot blame them for self-harm unless they- my self-harm unless they directly had a role in it, aka telling me to kill myself or getting their fans to tell me to kill my- and cut myself. That is not what's going on. Do not harass Jasmine. Okay, do not do that. They're- 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 they're almost innocent in this drama. It seems that after this interview, things would die down significantly for the next month. At least, 
publicly they would die down for the next month, before sometime in late January or early February, Robin would upload a video titled Fuck You, which was allegedly a message from Robin's brother claiming Robin had killed himself. Robin, posing as his brother, would reply to people in comments on Twitter and on Discord about how they were treating Robin's suicide and repeatedly using slurs like the N-slur and a slur for Pakistani people. His brother would also purposely misgender Robin and act like an overall absolute shithead. Also, yeah, I do say Robin doesn't like it, but it's a jiggy old time to see white women freak. Doubting a kid's death is weird. I deleted her server because the same thing was happening. They're faking it, most likely. You cannot hang yourself at a mental hospital, or even harm yourself at all. I don't care. Was really in the comments saying that she faked her death and then is getting horny on them in DMs. Damn, you know, I trusted you once, but I'll never be on your side again. Me when Domino Dut will never be on my side again. A normal human being unlike you. Bruh. Woo 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 woo. I hope you cunts are happy. You pushed a kid to killing yourself. You all need to grow up if you're attacking a literal 13 year old over her being immature. Shut the fuck up. No, you didn't. You made a comment saying they faked it. She. Excuse my language. By the way, I'm allowed to call Robin a she because she is my sister. You're just being transphobic by doing this misgendering thing. Robin hates they pronouns. You've proven a comment was hearted and we talk similar. That screenshot says I just don't want to show my voice because I'm insecure and literally just sound like a depressed Robin. We grew up the exact same. I was in a similar situation when I was Robin's age. Lamau. The fuck you think I am? Why would I hurt your friends when I don't even know who the fuck you are? Shaking in my socks right now. Wants their friends to cut ties with me. Rob isn't in a mental hospital. They are in a regular hospital from stabbing themselves. Calm down. This was triggered by waves after waves of comments telling Robin that their depression wasn't real, and while that may be an explanation, it's not an excuse for how Robin acted. Of course, when Robin was caught in his lie, he first attempted to prove his brother was real by calling his brother, though people quickly figured out it was just Robin talking to a recording he had made. Robin has since apologized for the stunt, but whether or not people forgive him is not for me to decide. In this time, a user by the name of Domino Dot would come into the picture and post a now deleted Google Doc on Robin and the things he allegedly did including racism, sexism, and faking his own suicide. I've tried going over the doc, but the remaining screenshots are all far too blurry to read. Robin would go on to have quite a bit to say to Domino Dot over a deleted live stream. It's not even fucking funny. I know Domino Dot thinks it's so fucking funny. Oh my god, a mentally ill person having a breakdown. Slit your wrists, Domino. Fucking bleed out. Get raped. Get fucking beaten over and over. I have your, I have your fucking dad fills you with his fucking cum and fucking kills you. My fucking god, I'm dead inside. It seemed there was a bit more history between Robin and Domino that no one seemed to be aware of. Robin had mentioned before that he had been harassed by Domino, including claims of Domino having made fun of Robin's mental health but there has still been little proof to back up these claims. I've asked Robin how he knows Domino, and he claimed Domino to be an obsessive ex-fan. I was unable to find and get into contact with Domino Dot for this video, so take that with a grain of salt. All this to say, Robin should not have been given a pass for what he said to Domino, regardless of what Domino may have said to him. But this moment was taken out of context by quite a few commentators as an example of Robin simply lashing out at his audience for no reason, so I had to clarify that. It would be another month without incident until March 10th, 2022, where Robin would attempt suicide on livestream. This would not be his only time doing this, but it was the only one I could nail down a date for. To my knowledge, there have been at least two times Robin has attempted to commit suicide on livestream. Robin would upload on March 11th, 2022, a video titled I'm Okay, where he explained that he was fine. He had a panic attack the previous day, and had roughly grabbed and shoved his pet rabbit aside during this attack. He would later elaborate that this was because the rabbit was biting at them during this panic attack, though some people take this with a grain of salt. I, I was having a panic attack over my rabbit and I was scared that I hurt her. I, yesterday I was having a panic attack and I sort of gripped my bunny by the throat and shoved her away really roughly and I couldn't stop thinking of that so I just... But the wording in his description would cause another ruckus in the community. Trigger warning, self-harm, suicide, violence, grooming. Something is so terribly wrong with me. I'm beyond sick in the head at this point. I have nightmares every day about Redacted, and I know it was an unhealthy situation, but I miss him so much. I need to be groomed again to feel safe. I need destruction, and I need to hurt myself before I hurt somebody else. I don't even bother to keep track of how long I stay clean because it's always less than a day, and I end up cutting myself. I don't need anyone else. I don't care if me and Toxikai's situation was toxic. I love him and he loved me. Every time I had nightmares about him, I wake up and cut myself and think of suicide all day long because I can't be with him. It doesn't help that my mother is trying to ruin my life and triggering my PTSD so bad that I can't function. 
I'm getting violent. It's scary. I tried to strangle my rabbit today because she was bothering me during a panic attack. I know it was wrong, but the thing is, I crave that. I need to hurt something to keep myself sane. I love my rabbit, but someone is going to die by the end of this year if I can't figure out a way to fix myself. I saw my- my parents don't even love me anymore. Nobody does. Not even someone who groomed me. People often claim that Robin would go back on his description only after he was called out on it, but he clearly contradicts himself between the video and the description. I'm a bit more inclined to believe this was simply just Robin messing up on the wording and using language much stronger than he intended to. The community at large was right to be concerned over the well-being of Robin's animal when he claims craving to hurt it, especially when there's seemingly already been an incident where the animal could have been seriously injured. If you crave hurting something, I agree that things should be taken away from the person in question so that both parties are safe. But I do find it a little bit ridiculous that people are trying to use this as a gotcha moment for Robin. He can't control intrusive thoughts, just the same the fact he can't control anxious or depressed thoughts. Yes, it is a dangerous situation for the animal, but this should not be used as evidence that Robin is the second coming of Satan or something like that. Of course, he should work on not acting on them. I feel like I need to take a pause here to reiterate that I do not support animal cruelty of any kind, and I do think it would be for the best if Robin's rabbit was taken away and put in a safer situation. However, trying to use this incident to paint Robin as an intentional animal abuser feels like it's stretching the truth more than a little bit to portray Robin in the worst possible light. The videos at the time did not share the sentiment, and went around claiming Robin to be an animal abuser, with some people going out of their way to contact Robin to simply rub it further in his face that they believed Robin to be a horrible person who was abusing his pet. And yes, Robin should not have sent death threats to this individual for attacking them in DMs, as death threats are never fucking appropriate. I'm also very, very tired of people pouring gasoline onto a fire and then acting shocked and disgusted when that fire burns brighter. Uh-huh. Fun fact, strangling your pets is no okay. Yeah, sure dude, me shoving my rabbit off when it was biting my fucking scars during a panic attack is worse. Didn't strangle, grabbed it by the throat. I misused the word because I panicked. You didn't say you shoved it, you said you fucking strangled it and crave hurting it. Not craved hurting her, I have intrusive thoughts which I do not want and a lot of them are about hurting people. On March 21st, two different videos would come out on the same day, with the first one being Father Ashton's video, Birdie 2.0, followed by a live stream hosted by one of Ashton's friends, Kite Kun, along with another friend, Jack, who claims to be a mental health professional. These two videos would go on to shape the majority of the drama, as their attitudes towards Robin would be echoed in all videos that would follow after them, said attitudes being ones of intense skepticism, dismissiveness towards Robin and his issues, and complete ignorance as to what led up to the situation, or what Robin's detractors might be doing to worsen the situation. Ashton's video is hard to sit through, as it's filled with a lot of passive-aggressive language, okay. demeaning comments, Hi, you don't really know me, but I've been following all the drama for a little bit now. I saw your latest video saying that you feel the need to kill yourself on stream in order to prove that you are suicidal, but why? From me, someone who is 19 and has dealt with depression for a few years as well as a self-harm addiction, to you, a young soul who seems to have gotten themselves into some hot water. I don't understand why you would need to prove anything. Denying that Robin is suffering at all because their suffering has caused other people's suffering. If you're doing this just for people to take you more seriously and to pay more attention to you, then you can just say I feel like shit without doing all of this extra crap. What you're doing is hurting more people and giving them actual trauma because you want them to show more of a reaction to your pain and problems. Saying that Robin does not deserve any sympathy. Oh, and please stop using the trauma you gave people to make your audience have sympathy for you. You have created victims of trauma. They deserve that sympathy, not you. And trying to debunk one of his suicide attempts. First of all, they're alive. Duh. Don't worry. What vibe did you personally get from that? Robin took around six 100 milligram ibuprofen tablets for a total of 600 milligrams. You can take a maximum of 800 milligrams safely. Surely, if they were actually trying to end it, they would know this. If it was a spur of the moment thing, they would still know taking a few tablets would do nothing. I believe this is an emotionally complicated issue for most people, where most people may attempt or do dangerous things with their lives on a whim out of emotional duress. You don't have to do major damage for it to be considered a real attempt, honestly. This is a very complicated issue. You may have noticed I said most people because I don't think this group includes Robin.
It's veiled under this vague comment of wanting to help Robin, but at every turn he takes a shot at Robin's mental health problems, or his perceived lack thereof mental health problems. This video uses the fact that Robin has acted poorly as a reason to completely ignore or brush off any possibility of Robin struggling, which doesn't sit right with me. Saying that someone's mental health struggles can't possibly be real because they made XYZ bad decisions? Now where have I heard that before? This video also brings up a disturbing story that Robin has shared on Twitter about how when he was 8 years old, he had killed a cat that had attacked his dog. I killed my neighbor's cat and they still don't know it was me. Why the fuck did he even say that in the first place? Also, he tends to say shit after he gets backlash, so I'm taking him with a huge grain of salt. And even then, it proves how fucked up Robin is. Show the full tweet then. I said in the original tweet that it happened when I was 7, Lamau. Also, because I just remembered it and thought it was weird? Also, regarding me killing a cat, I was 7 and I've apologized. It's nearly 7 years ago, Lamau. Move on. Difference is, cats aren't human. Go to the butchers and go complain to the butcher that cows are being murdered. Go start a fight with some people in Asian cultures, not all, just some, who eat domestic animals. Go start a fight with like 90% of the human race for eating meat. There is yet to be any proof to these tweets about whether or not this was an edgy story that Robin made up or something that really happened. The live stream made by Kite Kun is similarly hard to sit through, as all three hosts make a lot of jokes about the situation, with many, many comments about how they suspect Robin is simply doing all of this for attention, so they can't possibly be really struggling with their mental health. They're suicidal, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. But I think it also goes further than that because so many people, and this is kind of like one of the big things I wanted to bring up, so many people think that by being mean to this person you will get them to stop or they're like overly harsh or like super like i don't know you're you're an idiot what are you doing that kind of stuff but actually that pushes them and their fans further into like this whole cult like mentality because it really feels like a cult like these people are so for this person even when it's really obvious that something is fake or you tell them like hey this is not real yeah. they won't they don't care they just don't even care. But now I just want to ask, because since all three of us have seen, um, like, the latest live stream, what are your thoughts based on what, like, you've, you've seen during the live stream? Maybe Jack, because he hasn't been able to talk. We've been talking <laughs> yeah. so much. What? Um, oh, no, you're fine. I was just waiting patient. You know, I was just waiting patiently. I thought you guys could do, like, the introduction stuff. Mm. Um, as far as my thoughts go, though with the um the live stream mm -hmm. is that uh, it is very clearly just an act for attention also ray asks why would you post any of your self-harm slash attempts online when i feel that way my first thought isn't oh, oh oh wait let me set a stream up also ray asks why would you post any of your self-harm slash attempts online when i feel that way my first thought isn't oh, 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 wait, let me set a stream up and everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot to mention that at the end of their streams, whenever they quote unquote pass out, the camera mysteriously goes dark, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, in the yeah. last stream, they, they were supposedly passed out, but then you could see their camera was moving. They were moving their laptop so that they could turn off the stream while they were laying down. It was like... Well, yeah. here's the thing. You guys are taking him more seriously than I am. I am not taking this kid seriously. Mm -hmm. Like, whatsoever. I'm just scared, honestly. <laughs> I, I, I just, I've seen some really messed up stuff in the past. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I just, I'm not taking this seriously. Huh. I'm I not taking this. <laughs> Blackstar said, you're faking. My evidence, you're not dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it was especially painful to listen to everyone speculate about how much it would really, really hurt if they were told their struggles were fake or invalid, before harping right back onto Robin and saying how his struggles were fake and invalid. I think you know by now that people are most likely going to say you faked things. Doesn't that hurt? Doesn't that bother you beyond belief? I know it would bother me, especially when I'm dealing with stuff. It makes you feel like shit when even one person says you're lying or faking it. So why do you keep doing this? And that's the thing I wanted to talk about. Like, if if you're really somebody who is dealing with a lot, like, mentally, um, I don't understand how you could put yourself through this so many times and have so many people even coming to your stream being like, do it, just do it for real. You know? I don't understand that.
I don't get why you feel the need to prove anything, which I think is why people are constantly bashing you for faking stuff. Uh, listen, I'm going to be honest, the suicide attempt didn't seem real. You don't overdose on two pills of, of 400 milligram ibuprofen that easily. Um, you, and I think Ashton even showed what the like actual, like, what's an okay dosage to take. And it was, yeah, it's within the like okay dose. Um, you claim you threw up whatever pills you took too. Why are you slurring in your video? Pills don't take effect that quickly. It's just logics and science. It doesn't take a whole lot to understand that, yeah, you weren't really overdosing on stream. And then he says, wait, where is it? He says, but you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Maybe you do have a problem, but even though you might be faking stuff, why? If your life was so perfect and you were so happy with yourself. I don't know why you'd be on here trying to get people's attention like this. Maybe you're lonely, maybe you feel like no one cares, but dude, this really isn't the way to do it. It's triggering and, and even insulting to those who have gone through a whole lot. Treating Robin as if he could never have any reason except wanting attention for the way he was at. Treating him like he was overreacting, like he shouldn't be taken seriously. Even if Robin was acting out the live stream, he was clearly a very mentally ill kid and seeing so many people saying again and again that his mental illness didn't seem real or couldn't be real must have caused an unimaginable amount of damage. Keep in mind, these live streams were preceded by months after months of harassment, of being told to kill himself continually, of people consistently painting him in the worst light possible and watching his every move like a hawk. Yes, Robin made more than enough mistakes to have gotten to where he has, but no one should deserve being harassed the way Robin was. His problems were brushed over again and again, and he gradually took more extreme measures to prove that he was in pain until it got to the spoiling point. There are no excuses for the people he's hurt through his actions, undoubtedly, but acknowledging the pain he has caused other people shouldn't come at the cost of ignoring how Robin got to this point in the first place. Robin was in a lot of pain, and he hurt a lot of people as a result of that. His pain is not an excuse, but at the same time, we should not be treating Robin like the monster under our beds. A series of videos by Goat Cannon would also be released that mostly repeated what had already been covered in the previous video by Father Ashton as well as the live stream. After these videos, Robin will make a video apologizing for what they had done, and although the original video has been taken down, Goat Cannon did make a video discussing their apology. Seb also made a very prominent video talking about Robin and their experiences with him. It wouldn't be until April 4th that a significant development in the situation would occur. Father Ashton releases a video titled Brain Dead Robin slash Graffiti Major Update, where Kaikun, not Ashton, contacted Robin after the live stream to ask some questions. They were able to get confirmation from Robin's father that Robin's psychiatrist has confirmed that it was very likely Robin had BPD. And with this information comes the part where I want to pull my hair out as Ashton flat out stakes that he did not take Robin seriously before this, which led him to not doing more research into the situation. In this communication attempt, Robin actually called their father to ask for a document that shows proof of their psychologist speculating that they had borderline personality disorder. Rather than acting confused, the father pointed to this document being online. This means that without a doubt, Robin's psychologist does think that they may have borderline personality disorder. I did some research about borderline personality disorder, now that I know that I should be taking it seriously. It was hard to take anything seriously, because of how often the things they said turned out to be lies, or attempts at making people do something they want. I'm ready to talk to you all about what this means. The point of this video is understanding Robin, correcting my previous video, and giving all of you some new advice, and a fresher perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, is what happened. That led me to, like, uh, I have borderline personality disorder, so that led to, like, a huge, like, mental breakdown where I hyperventilated and panicked and was, and, like, actually, like, sobbing and sobbing and sobbing. I've reached out to Father Ashton about his videos, and he has expressed regret for how he initially handled the situation. However, as of writing the script, I have not gotten confirmation from Robin or Ashton about a personal slash private apology for the way Ashton treated Robin or how Robin may have acted. May 8th, which is around the time I started this project, was when I reached out to Robin myself to try to talk to them about everything that had happened, and on the next day, Robin would post a video titled, Finally Deleting YouTube and My Social Media, Apology and Goodbye. In the video, they would read out an apology they'd written to me when I asked them to explain his situation a little more. While Robin did end up deleting his socials soon after posting the video, he would come back to Twitter on an NSFW account to post NSFW. I also don't think you need me to tell you that minors in NSFW spaces is no good. Contrary to popular belief, it's not a crime for him to draw his own porn, but it is a problem he's sharing it to the public. 
June 25th, a video called Dear Robert Snooch slash Braindead Robin slash Phantom Graffiti Elopia stop posting porn on Twitter is uploaded explaining the situation. This video does bring up some points about how hypocritical Robin has been in criticizing other creators regarding porn of underage characters while he himself has done so as well. Without getting too deep into the argument, I want to make it pretty clear that I don't think we should be making a problem of kids exploring their sexuality through characters their own age. And that is where the situation has been. A lot of people who are watching this video probably have forgotten about the situation. A lot of people probably haven't even heard of the situation before. When I first looked into it, I was pretty shocked. I will fully admit that I wasn't Robin's biggest fan, but being a relative stranger to the situation, it always felt a bit excessive how many people were harping on him. This video has been over half the year in the making because it was so difficult to sit through all the videos and take notes without getting upset with how things were being handled, or how Robin was being talked to. I tried my best to keep that tone out of this video and confined to the horrendously scribbled rage in my notes. Without a doubt, Robin has hurt a lot, a lot of people through his actions. Some intentional, some unintentional. I have no doubts that there have been more than a few times he's attempted to lie his way out of a situation, like with his brother, after he messed up terribly, which is something he needs to work on. Even if these lies were not born out of malice, the damage they did and the people they hurt are still very real. This child is mentally unwell and is hurting other people because he can't deal with the stress of being mentally unwell. It's hurting him and it's hurting everyone around him. His mental state should not be used against him as a way to demonize him by speculating if it's real or brush aside because his suffering has caused more suffering. As I've stated throughout the video, the possible explanations I've laid out are no excuse for how he's gone about things, but I really hope that people can approach the situation differently with a new perspective. Hopefully, Robin stays away from grooming allegations from now on, and learns how to unplug himself from the internet when it gets too overwhelming before he makes another mistake that might end up hurting more people. I hope that Robin is getting help, and I hope he has learned from the situation as distressing as it was for him, so he doesn't make the same mistakes going forward. With all that being said, thank you all so much for sticking around, and I'll see you all whenever the next one may be. Bye!